Guten Tag, Freunden of Vod Culture. Can't do it. Shouldn't have done it. Regret it massively. Probably offensive. I do apologize. Hello, my Simon from What Culture. Clearly suffering from the powerful sun here in Las Vegas as it beats down on my bald head. Don't worry, I got sun cream on. People keep messaging me going, Simon, wear a hat. I am wearing a hat. It's a hat made of cream. That's right. You always wear your sunscreen. Genuinely important, but let's not get off track. Now, we are but a few hours. Not a few hours, but, you know, a certain close amount of time from AEW Double or Nothing. And after having a chat with the What Culture guys, we decided, got written down here as always, there are some things that must happen at Double or Nothing 2023. Now, when you have a conversation and you're a YouTuber, you don't just keep it to yourself. You put it on the Internet. So... There's the MGM Grand, where, of course, Dynamite and Rampage were held. The T-Mobile Arena is where a double nothing's going down. According to the internet, just went over 10,000 tickets, which is very, very cool. Now, we did talk about this on the AEW Prediction Show. Make sure you check it out. We'll get a video up at the end of the video. I'll let one of those cards as well. But I wanted to get into it a little bit more nitty-gritty. Because when we come to the Four Pillars match for the AEW World title, which, by the way, this came out recently. MGF came out with that whole storyline. He thought this was a good idea to try and elevate Jungle Boy, Summer Guevara, and Darby Allen, which I massively like. Because I think the person behind the MGF character is very, very astute when it comes to wrestling. This is why I think he'll go far, because he understands the bigger picture. He understands the business, as some people say. Something big has to happen at the end of this match. And I think because Sammy Guevara has been the focus for so long about what's he going to do, is he going to lay down, is he a good guy, is he a bad guy? And he did just have a face turn from nowhere. It was a little bit strange. It was... It felt like a red herring. It felt like a ruse. If I was Sherlock Holmes, I'd be like, ha-ha, I'm not going to follow this path because I understand it's going in the wrong direction. Whereas the kind of ongoing storyline, other than Darby Allen obviously being a future world champion, I think, and coming from nothing, cleaning toilets, and now being a, an AEW guy. Jungle Boy Jack Perry, I feel... Because he kept, he, he did that promo on Dynamite where he was all like, look, when I leave this double or nothing, it has to be better than the last two times. I've been sad, I've been upset, I've been feeling down in my tum-tum. This time I want to walk away feeling like something has changed. Now, he tied that into becoming AEW World Champion. Buster just pulled up, I'm not going to get on them. Um, but I think there could be more to this. I do think Maxwell Jacob Friedman is going to retain the title. I'm not saying that Jungle Boy is going to lay down. But I think Jack Perry should, I'm going to use the word should, help him in some sense. Maybe he screws over Darby, maybe he screws over Sammy. And you get an alignment out the other end of this. And it ties back into that promo that MGF and him had in the room when Darby Allen caught them. It's like, what are you doing? Well, he said, look, I can make you a star. But you've got to stop running around as Jungle Boy. You've got to stop being this goody two-shows. I know you can be a top person, but you need to be more like me. So I like to think he's going to corrupt Jungle Boy's head. To the point, we get rid of Jungle Boy. I have no problem with Jungle Boy. People go, well, you can't call him Jungle Boy when he's 42. Yes, you can. Who cares? I'm saying warm and fuzzy in my tum-tum. When I'm 97, I'm going to keep saying that. But that's neither here nor there. I understand you may want to have a serious edge to some fans. It's good to think about these things. We get rid of the Jungle Boy. You call him Jack Perry. He aligned himself with MJF. Maybe he can win a TNT title or an international title or whatever it may be. The FTW title. I don't even care. And then eventually you can do that feud down the line. But I think it keeps Jack Perry in a focal point. I don't think he's going to win the championship. So this is something that I think that we should do. I think it makes that match more interesting. I don't mean that in a bad way. I think those guys are going to be absolutely incredible. They're totally going to smash it. But, I mean, coming out the other end, you always want to have stories, you want to have angles. And I think that would just give his character a certain something, something. And also, there's nothing wrong with having some experience as a heel. Even if it doesn't work, we can just switch it back. It's not a problem. There's so much wrestling on TV. We're about to get more of AEW Collision. So, that's number one. Turn Jack Perry heel. Get rid of the Jungle Boy. Align with MGF. And let's just see what happens. It doesn't matter if it sucks. Sink or swim. We know he's good as a baby face. We can go back to it. So that's number one. The other thing is, we don't 100% know what's going down with the Women's Championship right now. If I was going to hazard a guess, I don't believe Jamie Hayter is going to compete. All the best to her. I hope she's doing okay. I believe it's a shoulder injury. We're going to put somebody else in the match, I imagine, because you've got Tony Storm there. I don't think we'll do an interim championship. I mean, it will be an interim championship if Jamie Hayter's out for a while. If not, just keep it on her. We can sort it out. But I don't think we'll use the word interim after all the chaos last time. This is a little bit out there. I grant you. And if this wasn't in the plans, you probably don't want to do it because you need to make sure you set these things up. Jay Cargill's undefeated streak to me at the moment feels... It's good. And I like Jay Cargill. She's clearly a star. She's clearly amazing. I don't understand the, the argument on the other side. But I'm not sure the TBS title needs to exist. 
And I think what we could do to really light a fire under the women's division is join these two titles now and get Jay Cargill in the mix with everybody else. I think it's kind of a shame that she's not mixing up with a Jamie Hayter, a Britt Baker, a Soraya, uh, Sheeda, whoever else it may be, like a Tony Storm, etc., etc., Ruby Soho. I would like to see those matches. And I think sometimes, and I think this was some mid-card titles in other promotions too, if there is just one title that people are going for, it makes it feel more prestigious. It makes it more fun. And you can still have feuds underneath. It can be over a Japanese shampoo commercial. We've seen that back in the day. That was between Booker T and Edge, two WWE Hall of Famers. So I think all of a sudden, if the opportunity does present itself, you could probably get away with this. And I think it may actually garner more interest in the women's division. Now, what you do with Ty Valkyrie and Jade Cargill, I don't know. But we could plant some seeds here. And then we can sort of let it play out on television. So that's what I would do. I would kind of go a bit crazy here. I think Sean Ross Sapp said it uh, when he was talking about Jamie Hayter's industry, uh, injury. He was like, I don't think the women's division is ever going to be the same again. I'm paraphrasing here, so excuse me if I get that wrong. But it certainly made my eyebrow go up. And I hope it's something like this. Let's get them all in one mix. Let's tell stories and let them have them all fighting for one prize. I think that would absolutely rock. So I'm throwing it in here. I absolutely am. When we get to the Blackjack Casino Battle Royal as well. This is an actual really hard thing to try and establish. I don't think Orange Cassidy, after his amazing 23-match run, the best championship run right now in all of wrestling, come fight me. I won't fight you. I'll just shake your hand and give you a hug. But I don't think he should lose by being thrown over the top rope. Unless, that's right, here's the asterisk. It's by the one and only Jay White. Jay White is amazing. I know he's got this feud with Ricky Starks, but hey, man, you can merge storylines. We've seen that happen before. Jay White is such a wonderful asshole, and he's such a wonderful heel, and he understands his character so well, and he does not care how... Like, he's perfectly happy to be, like, the lowest of the low. We saw that in New Japan all the time. He's someone that can get out, get away with throwing Orange Cassidy, the piece of fruit, over the top rope and winning a championship that way and being like, I'm the man, I'm the champion. Then you can have a series of matches. Maybe Orange Cassidy can be the guy that teams up with Ricky Starks. Because do not forget, Juice Robinson and Jay keep beating him up. Remember on Dynamite? Juice Robinson going, eh, like some kind of crazy South Park character. So that almost writes itself. Ricky Starks and Orange Cassidy going against Jay White and Juice Robinson because Orange Cassidy is mad what Jay White did to him. Then you go into the singles program. Maybe Orange Cassidy wins it back. Maybe Jay White hits the switchblade and he gets the one, two, three or the Blade Runner. I always get confused. His nickname is Switch. I don't know. Who cares? I care a lot, actually. That upsets me. But that's something you can get away with. So if we are actually booking Orange Cassidy to lose the championship, make sure it's Jay White. Make sure it's Jay White. I think it would be wonderful. And his shibby in grin that you had at the end of it. I think it'd be so cool. And also, I genuinely think you can get four months out of Orange Cassidy versus Jay White. They will have terrific matches. And then you decide which direction you want the international title to go in. Because right now, it has credence. All because of what Orange Cassidy did. And as I always say, Orange Cassidy, one of the best wrestlers in the world. Same with Jay White. He's underrated, even though everyone knows he's brilliant. So I'm throwing that on the table too. As we are talking about the Battle Royal as well, I'll keep this one nice and simple. Rumors suggest that Keith Lee and Swerve Strickland were supposed to be on the pay-per-view. <laughs> It started in October. They're now in the Battle Royal. Here's what we need to do. We need to have an angle. I don't care what it is. Some kind of angle. Cops are coming to get me, so I've got to speed up. We've got to have some kind of an angle that leads to a match on Dynamite. We've just got to do it. Pull the trigger. I agree. Phil agrees. The What Culture guys agree. We talked to some fans. They agree. I listened to Wrestling Observer the other day. They agree. Everyone just wants to see the match. And not only is it a little bit overcooked, they'll have a great match. It's Keith Lee and Swerve Strickland. It will be flipping awesome. And Swerve needs more keith lee needs more and i think the only way we can do that is if we put this feud to bed it's just been way too long it's way too elongated it happens sometimes i appreciate the fact it hasn't vanished entirely but do an angle in that match and then do the match on dynamite get it done draw a line under it and we can move on to something else uh, a couple more these are pretty obvious but i think it's you know i think you need to do it I think the Elite have to win the Anarchy in the arena so we can reestablish them as a group because Hangman Adam Page is back in it. And then I think we need to start building towards FTR and the Young Bucks. Use that as a big wing. Maybe Kenny Omega going after a singles title or going back into his program with Will Ospreay. You can do that. We've got the Forbidden Door coming up. Don't know what you want to do with Hangman Adam Page. Some water just fell on my leg. I think the palm tree is attacking me. But, you know, I think if they win, it kind of establishes them to go after something else. Whereas I think the Blackpool Combat Club can probably suffer a loss right now. I mean, the other thing you could do, of course, you could set up Kenny Omega versus Brian Danielson part two. Mate, if you're going to do Forbidden Door, Omega versus Osprey, you can do Omega versus Danielson and the Wembley show. So I think they should win as well. And my last one, Adam Cole defeats Chris Jericho. We go right into the Adam Cole. Oh, we leave it a little bit. The whole point is our direction is Adam Cole and MGF for the World Championship. And this ties back to my point one, which is Jack Perry. Roderick Strong will be in Adam Cole's corner. We know this. 
and Jungle Boy, Jack Perry, can be an MGF's corner. You can do the Roderick Strong, Jack Perry feud. Roderick Strong's amazing. He won't beat the crap out of him like Rouge did, which will benefit him too. I think with his experience as well, it will help Jungle Boy be an even better bad guy. And I think these are all little things that we can do at the show, which will allow Dynamite and Collision to grow over the next few weeks and over the next few months. And also, don't forget, on Dynamite, MGF did start going back to the whole, oh, the big contract bidding war of 2024. Last time he did that was when CM Punk was around. Just throwing it out there. Throwing it out there. Could we be going back to that feud? I would imagine so. Or at least we're going to plant the seeds to do it. So, just some food so some, blah, 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 just some food for thought. Make sure you let me know your thoughts in the comment below. If you don't agree, that's all right. You can say, Simon, you goober. You don't know what you're talking about, which I don't. But somehow, it landed me in Vegas, so I'm going to keep ranting and raving anyway. Now, the, yeah, make sure you enjoy the pay-per-view as well. It's a crazy weekend for wrestling. We've got WWE. We've got NXT. We've got this. Just enjoy it as much as you possibly can. I appreciate you watching. There'll be a video on the screen right now. Probably AEW Double or Nothing Predictions. Click that, and you can get my sort of more specific win-loss kind of thoughts when it comes to the show. Make sure you put a smile on your face. Enjoy it. I'm going to moonwalk out of the camera. I regret, I've done it now. I regret it. I'm moonwalking away. I can't, no, Phil, I can't really moonwalk. I'm just, I'm just going backwards. Well, that's the end of my career. Goodbye. <laughs>